The most fascinating adventure for those who love to explore the undersea world is the coral reef in the tropical waters. In the past 50 years, scuba divers and snorkelers traveled to these locations to enjoy the coral reef as tourists. More recently, local governments and diving communities have joined up to create what are known as artificial reefs, where man-made objects such as derelict ships and other structures are placed on the barren ocean floor, where a new reef oasis will naturally form, seeded by man's placement of these high-profile structures. In the past decade, a number of locations have enlisted the talents of artists to create underwater museums of sculptures that also serve as a coral reef enhancement. Grenada is one such location we recently visited. The sculpture park is easily accessible via boat from the main port of St. George, two miles north of the capital on the west coastline. The sculptures are situated in a variety of depths of water with a maximum of 35 feet. The park is visited daily by scuba divers, snorkelers, and glass-bottom boats. The first of these sculptures was initiated by a world-renowned sculpturist who helped get the park started. Jason DeClaire Taylor set out to use his works which are derived from life casts of the local community. He installed concrete figures into the ocean floor, mostly consisting of a range of human forms, from solitary individuals to a ring of children holding hands facing outwards. After entering the water at Grenada's Molinaire Bay, we first see our first sculpture, The Lost Correspondent. The Lost Correspondent was installed in 2006 at a depth of 25 feet. We see a lone concrete figure at a desk typing on a typewriter. The sculptures in this bay are not placed in true artificial reef tradition, which is a barren sandy bottom, but rather in a museum-like setting in the valleys between the natural reef bottom where they simply add to the existing reef growth. Soon we are greeted by a rather large spotted eagle ray who is eager to guide us to other locations in the park's collection of sculptures. Here, Grenadian Troy Lewis has installed a sculpture that has now become one of the main attractions, the Christ of the Deep. An adaptation of Rio de Janeiro's Christ the Redeemer statue, instead of Christ looking down on Rio, his arms are stretched upwards, looking toward the surface. There are other similar Christ of the Deep statues we have seen, such as the one in Key Largo, Florida. Next we find the Vicissitudes, installed in 2007, which is Jason DeClaire Taylor's most recognized work in the park. It is a ring of 26 standing children holding hands and facing outwards. The design took six months to make, weighed in at 15 tons in dry cement. The ring symbolizes the concept of life's ongoing cycle and highlights the importance of creating a sustainable and well-managed environment for future generations, giving reference to the ability of children to adapt to their surroundings. Many people incorrectly believe that these structures are a monument to the hundreds of African slaves that sought freedom or were forced to jump overboard from slave ships traveling through the Middle Passage, but Taylor denies that was his inspiration. Instead, he said he is delighted that others can appreciate his work and it gives them their own inspiration. The works are constructed using pH neutral materials to instigate the natural growth and subsequent changes intended to explore the aesthetics of decay, rebirth, and metamorphosis. 
Taylor seeks to encourage environmental awareness by creating public art projects which are examples of marine conservation and works of art that hope to instigate social change and lead us to appreciate the natural beauty of the underwater world. Moving into the Bay Area, now we find the lone statue of a praying woman. Here, one of the local divers free dives down to have a closer look. Soon, our guide for this tour, the Spotted Eagle Ray, shows us to the next location of his favorite. An underwater sculpture park would not be complete without the mermaid. Next we find Grace Reef, which was built in a sandy valley where the coral growth and natural habitat have been decimated by Hurricane Ivan. Here there are 16 statues, each cast from a local Grenadian woman, and at first we see them lying flat half covered with sand. There's a metal pipe rail, and it appears that the sculpture is still being constructed for something similar to the vicissitudes we saw earlier. So now we're being summoned back to the catamaran for a quick stop in the bay for a barbecue lunch and then a slow sail trip back to the port in St. George. <laughs> 